Individual training is given in all branches of mechanics. These wild boys of a few years ago have accepted the change and many of them have thrilled to the power of accomplishment. While a lot of the old traits are still strong, kindly and patient instruction, day after day, is doing its work. It's surprising how these Russian children, once living like wild animals, have adapted themselves to the routine of classes, and how these classes are Americanized to the extent of the translation of many of our works into Russian. English is studied as their chief foreign language. The instruction is good and the teachers patient and the students receptive. It has been said by a rather humorous visitor that every Russian carries a book in one hand and a hoe in the other. But the thing that gives the boys and girls the greatest thrill here is the afternoon drill and march. It marks the end of another day's activities and the beginning of an evening of rest. But above all, it thrills them because inborn in every Russian is the love of the parade. To In the distance, you see what is known as the Triumphant Gates, a monument built by Alexander I commemorating Russia's victory over Napoleon in 1812. Russia retains the influence exerted upon it by many nations. We look again upon the busy side of life in Russia. Russia is so large that the people vary a great deal. Many different languages are spoken and the costumes vary from the picturesque high-hatted Tatar to the famous blouse and boots. And so when representatives from the various republics meet to buy, sell or barter their products, we see a colorful scene. This is the commodity market located right in the heart of Moscow. As we take you around, observe the different types of people and the great variants of merchandise. One of the greatest steps forward that the new Russia has taken is the improvement and increase of manufacture. More and more factories are being built and modern machinery installed. It has been found that Russia prefers American-made machinery because of its stability and its almost foolproof operation. When Poland was a part of Russia, most of their manufactured products came from there. But Russia's plan to operate so that they will not have to rely on other countries means that they must lay great stress on increased manufacture. To this end, every factory is obliged to take in a percentage of apprentices who learn the trades while young and are given a small wage. In these factories, we find a great many women workers. For you see, when women were given equal rights in Russia, they were also given equal work. Nighttime in Moscow. This is known as Theater Square and is a very beautiful spectacle. When I tell you that there are over 50 theaters in Moscow, it shows that they like to entertain and to be entertained. One of the favorite pastimes in the matter of dancing is for a group on the stage to see which one can outdo the others. And although their dance is very energetic, the winner may have to dance for hours, and while he works, the audience eats. This is the dance of the nations, and Uncle Sam is always represented. 
Nowhere else in the world can you find such a huge, enthusiastic, and receptive audience as you find in Moscow. Another kind of entertainment is found in the clubhouses for workers, and these are very, very popular. When the day's tasks are over, they like to go to their favorite clubhouse and meet their friends. Perhaps I should have said opponents. Chess is a great game in Russia, and they have produced many champions. In the clubhouses, there is dining and dancing too. It's a place to spend a pleasant evening. Russians have always been known for their love of music. Every city has its symphony orchestra and gives many concerts. Each man knows his music well and plays it as he feels it. There is no leader. You'll notice that the eye of the musician is always on his music. Everyone has heard of Tolstoy, the great Russian author. This is his home. It is now a museum and is preserved exactly as it was when Tolstoy lived in it. It's a two-story house standing in the heart of a large tree-shaded park. In this room, Tolstoy's study, stands one of the earliest of Edison's dictaphones. You see, Thomas Edison was a great admirer of Tolstoy's works and he gave it to him when he found that Tolstoy was very nearsighted and had difficulty in writing. In the peaceful grounds with their birch trees and quiet waters, Tolstoy gained many of his inspirations. And now we're on our way to Nizhny Novgorod. The name of the city has recently been changed to Gorky. But Novgorod or Gorky is really the Detroit of Russia. Because of the many workers employed in the industrial center here, there are spacious playgrounds to make the children happy. For centuries, Gorky has been known for its famous fairs. They were fairs with all the trimmings. The Barkers were even more colorful when they told of their sideshow attractions in emphatic Russian. The rounds were even more interesting when you listened to old Russian folk songs and you rode on imitations of Arabian steeds and saw glittering decorations everywhere. And there were lots of whatever the children wanted, swings, thrilling rides and roller coasters. And you can always get ice cream and soda pop, even pink lemonade. side to the Russian people, they spend their time off just about as we do. Gorky is well called the Detroit of Russia, for they work as hard as they play. Huge deposits of coal and iron are put to good use. 